Sammy Leggett here representing Team JVS here to give you guys another movie review. So I had the honor of being able to check out Alien Romulus. If you don't know, Alien Romulus technically takes place between Alien and Aliens, which is first to second. Um, it is starring the main character named Rain. Rain has what she calls a brother named Andy. Andy is a cyborg, essentially. Well, no, he's not a cyborg. He's an android. But um, he and she are trying to find a way to kind of survive. Like, they're in a very bad situation. And she's trying to do what she can. And she, you know, comes upon some friends that come in with this harebrained scheme to try to get out, so to speak. And it does not end well because, unfortunately, they are directly intercepted by the Xenomorph in a way that they could have never predicted. So, what did I think about this film? I think this film is very freaking entertaining. And I'm also going to preface it with this because you guys are going to give me a lot of shade. I have not seen all the aliens. I have not seen Alien 1. I have not seen Alien 2. I've seen Alien 3. I've seen Alien Resurrection. Um, I've seen, of course, Alien vs. Predator. Um, I have seen Prometheus. I unfortunately saw Alien Covenant. And now we are where we are. I personally love Prometheus. I loved Prometheus. I, I thought Prometheus was amazing. I was hoping for a Prometheus part two, which the first half of Alien Covenant felt like a Prometheus part two. But then after that, it, it went a very a strained kind of location. And I really was a little weary of what this was going to be. But then I realized that the director of this is the same director that did Don't Breathe and Evil Dead, the recent one. And I knew it was going to be gruesome. I had a, a small little snippet that they showed at CinemaCon. And I was like, oh, this isn't just jump scares. This is actually well-placed cinematography. This is well-placed gore, violence, intensity, panic. And it keeps building and building and building. And I was like, okay, if this is anything like this 15 minutes that I've already seen in the movie, then this is going to be a great show. And it did not disappoint. This is sick. <laughs> this, is, this is so violent. This is so disturbing. They, yes, use scares to get you but it's not just jump scares like the things that are happening are just diabolically sick <laughs> like there are there are certain shots that i've seen from like like i said i've seen prometheus i've seen you know uh resurrection i've seen unfortunately alien covenant i've seen you know alien versus predator so i've seen a lot of gory stuff but the way that they execute so many scenes there's a scene where freaking face huggers are like leaping out at like it's is so <laughs> terrifying in the way that they executed it. It's not like oh man, I'm terrified. Like I was on the edge of my seat not knowing what was about to happen and that was throughout the whole film. The movie initially establishes making sure you are dedicated to Callie uh Spaney's character uh Rain in her endeavors, in what she's trying to do. And I was kind of just like, oh, okay, this is interesting. But I, I didn't get it at the very beginning until I understood the depths of their relationship. And I'm talking about David Johnson's character. Now, David Johnson, he was in a movie recently that I really loved, and that was uh, Rye Lane. I thought it was such a good comedic, romantic comedy. Um, but it was kind of when I realized, like, this android is not well and she's not well but they are codependent and i'm like how's this gonna work in a world where they're about to intercept these most dangerous creatures in the universe essentially debatable i guess depending on if you're a predator fan but effectively their cohesion works in this like because you're always consistently concerned about one you know their mortality whether or not they're gonna live or die but then the depths and the levels of who they are as far as their humanity and what they mean to each other is also at stake. And they add that trope throughout with all the other characters they intercept in this movie. So like when there's other characters that are doing less than admirable things against them or when there's a character that's in disarray or in danger. Um, Isabella's character, Kay, is one of those that I give a good example for. She did a really good job in this. She... she in this film, she was put through a lot of compromising situations. I can't wait to see what she's going to do in a new Superman movie. I don't want her to divulge any more of that. But in this film, 
I don't know who has the worst. Like, Kaylee, uh, <laughs> or, or her, because I don't want to spoil it, but there are some things that happen with her character that is just, it's trauma fuel. It's trauma fuel. Now, as far as the practical applications, like the VFX, the CG, first off, the the space exploration side of this, this feels like a sci-fi film. And I love that. Like every single moment where they're in a vacuum of space and there is no sound or anything outside of what's actually actually happening or if there's an explosion or something's knocking up against something or something's scraping, the sound design plays it to perfection. Even like the score, the score actually lends itself to a lot of the buildup and the tension. I think they execute the, the score very well in this. The other thing, again, with the VFX and the practical effects, like some of the deaths and the things that go on, like they, it feels like they're using practical, like dummy stuff, but then they're using really good valued VFX and CG. And I think they use the CG in a very specific way, whether it's with the Xenomorphs, whether with the face huggers, whether it's with the backdrop, but then certain other things where it's more practical, like it doesn't, there's a scene that's a zero gravity scene and maybe one of the best zero gravity scenes they've ever done with any of these animals. Again, I haven't seen Aliens 1, 2, and I barely remember 3, but it is so freaking insane. And they, and they, they did such a good job of setting up that they show you the, the the limitations of what gravity looks like in a situation like this um, with all these different obstacles. And they, and they execute it so freaking well. So the payoff is great. There's a lot of freaking payoff in this. Now, I let you guys know that I have not seen those other films because a lot of people have been saying like, oh, well, this is a recall of this. or Oh, this character was connected to this or whatever. I have no recollection of any of this. I do know that there's probably a character that may be connected to something in the past. I have no understanding or knowledge of it. But did that deter or add any kind of value to me with watching? No. It, it was just like, okay, this is what this is happening right now. And I'm in it. <laughs> like it, it, it never to me felt like they were trying to pander to the past. It never felt like there was like, uh, trying to copy or mimic or duplicate something that happened in the past. It really felt like this is their own because at a certain point in the second half of this film, it goes to crazy levels. And that's where the director shines. The director has a way of pushing boundaries that a lot of times Western culture does not do. Like it's, this is something that normally from an international standpoint, like you, you know, push these small little levels, and like do this and do this death scene this specific way and this uncompromised situation to happens to this person. Like is, I don't want to spoil anything, but if you're squeamish or like whether it's blood or gore or guts, like you may not want to see this cause you're going to be, you're going to be hurting. And if you're thinking about taking your kids, please don't, don't take any kids that's over like any kids that's under 14, please don't do that. If you want to go and check out a movie ahead of time and then go and check and bring them in so you can kind of wash their eyes from what they may see or what you don't want them to see, do that. But to me, this was one of the most entertaining horror films I've seen this year. Now, I, would I say it's the best? No, I, I would give that to another film. I'm not going to place that up here. There's been a long lines of different films that have come out that's good uh, horror, but this is up there. This is a 9 out of 10 for me. This is... I really don't have any negatives about it. This may end up tipping over to being a 9.5 the more I focus and hone in on it. And I actually feel like I want to go back and watch Alien 1 and 2 to see if there's any kind of connections that I did miss because now that I know this takes place right between it. But if you're doubting whether or not to see Alien Romulus, let I'm telling you, <laughs> I've not seen the other two. I've barely seen any of the rest of them outside of Prometheus. And if you've seen Prometheus... You're seeing Alien Covenant, you're fine. And I think that you're gonna really, you're gonna really value what they do with this. This is insane. And I think you're gonna have an edge of your seat, entertaining ride that you don't wanna miss. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace, people.